Live on the grid, it's Kevin Wallace from Donnie right side with hour number two of the early line. It's all preview. Baseball, baseball, and then we're hitting the preseason. Not only tonight's games, but we're going to get into the weekend slate as well because there's actually a lot of juice out there for this NFL preseason slate. So let's waste no time. Brewers-Cubs early start for this game here, which is nice to see. Appreciate a little day baseball in Chicago. Ashby has the ball going up against Thompson. Totals a nine. All right, so it's it's not a seven, which means I guess it's not, the wind's not blowing in, uh-huh. but it's not like a 12, so I guess just normal wind today in Chicago, which I guess he allows to. Then, Donnie, you can just trust the numbers here. What do you see in Cubs Brewers? Yeah, I think we do get an over in this one, but do looking at the weather conditions, it's kind of, like I love looking at Chicago. If the wind's blowing in at all, nobody can hit the baseball, which is untrue, and they usually go over those sevens and seven and a halves. But if the wind is blowing out the dead center field, everybody climbs on. But if the wind blows out to like right field or left field, it's not as good as the wind blowing out to dead center field, but not the case today. 83 degrees at first pitch, wind blowing out to left center field. So it should be a plus day for the batters. If we take a look at Ashby, through 78 batters, Kevin, over the past 30 days. He's a left-handed pitcher, so usually you're going to stack up right-handed bats. Hasn't fared all that well. A 350 weighted on base percentage and an ISO power number of a 313. Flip it over to Milwaukee here, going up against a right-handed pitcher in Thompson. He struggled over the past month. 5.7 XFIP number, strikeout percentage under 16%. And how about this? Left-handed batters, 344 weighted on base percentage. Right-handed batters, 367 weighted on base percentage. And looking at those Milwaukee Brewers over the past month of how they've done against right-handed pitching, they've done very well. If we look at the first seven guys, actually eight guys in the lineup, seven of those eight guys, you know, if you look at the ISO power numbers, a 178 or higher. I think it's a pretty good day here. Afternoon baseball will be live on Moneyline on a Friday and should be cheering on it over, and I think it gets there. How about that? Looking for runs early, which is what you love to see. If you're trying to get involved with the first five, well, those options are not up just yet because it's early, folks. It's the early line. But when those numbers come around, we might just be in the mix. So you make sure you're tuned in to Moneyline, 1 p.m. Eastern start time. Inside hour number two, we'll have some Cubs Brewers. So we might be breaking it down on that opening hour, so you can't miss out. Again, Moneyline, 1 p.m. Eastern time there, Sirius XM, channel 159. That should count as the radio welcome, by the way. So when the radio audience randomly gets uh, in here, I already welcome you in. Where are even they? Even though you can't hear me. Where are they? Phillies, I don't even, I mean, they're in space right now, man. Phil's Mets, Aaron Nola's got the ball. How about the Phil's? A favorite here. And, and at least is solid. The, is the AL East the best division of baseball? No doubt about it, because the Washington Nationals are in this NL East, but the New York Mets and how good they've been playing – They've been an underdog now on open for their last five games here. DRS, pretty impressive stuff. Uh, Aaron Nola against Bassett. How do you see this one uh, jumping off the page? Yeah, Philly's ace on the mound today. This is one of those series where it's now in Philadelphia. You can't say, hey, uh, we won one game out of the series versus the Mets, and we'll take that. If you're not going to face DeGrom or Scherzer, you better take care of your business, and Nola should be able to do that today. But you are looking at a thin price there, the Philadelphia Phillies at the FanDuel Sportsbook at a minus 120. But also, take a look at that total listed at an eight. Now, here's what's going to be. The matchup to me today is the pitching of Aaron Nola, 3.4 XFIP over the past 30 days. He's been, he's been good throughout his career. Lefty-righty splits, decent here. 210 to lefties as a weighted on base percentage, but righties is at 352, which is a little bit elevated. The reason I bring that up here is I do think Aaron Nola is going to have a good performance. Same thing with the Mets pitcher that we'll get to in just a few moments. But the lineups here look better in the Mets' favor. And why I say that, if we take a look at the past 30 days in Major League Baseball for the Mets against right-handed pitching, take a look at some of these guys in the lineup. Marte, 342, weighted on base percentage. Lindor, 456. Alonzo, 335. Vogelbach, 413. McNeil, 378. Naquin, 399. And Batty, 967. So they got some guys doing some damage. Now, flipping it over to have the Phillies project against Chris Bassett. Bassett's been good. A 3.4 XFIP for himself over the past month of Major League Baseball. Strikeout percentage close to 22%. But take a look at these splits, Kevin. To lefties, which Bassett is a right-handed pitcher, a weighted on base percentage of 271. To righties, a 236. And also, look at the ISO power numbers, which are so important, specifically playing in a smaller ballpark at Citizens Bank. A 019 to lefties and an 058 to righties. I do think the Mets are going to be live in this game, but maybe a little bit more comfortable with saying, I think the game stays under. It takes nine to beat me, and I'm not sure if they can get there. I like that you did hold serve there. The radio audience did not get welcomed in by you, so they, they didn't deserve that there here. Uh, Where's my prompt? I'll quickly tell you. 
<laughs> My man. Uh, I'll tell you this when quickly, I though. Go- when uh, I get going, there's no stopping. Uh-huh. So you should know that. No, no. All right. We, 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 we got it. I'll just tell you this quickly. Bassett is a rare example of a guy that's uh, entered the ban list. Like, I'm not betting Jacob DeGrom under strikeouts anymore. Otani, McClanahan. Like, those are guys that have burned me too much. Bassett's the other way. I bet him over three different times. He loses by the hook every time. Can't do it. Don't care what the projections say. I have no time for Bassett anymore here and this group. Let's get Yankees Blue Jays in the mix before we make our way to a break. We've got Tyone, Talion against Gaussman. Yanks are favored here. Ooh, people are going to be back at the Blue Jays. People are going to be back at the Blue Jays lineup. People are going to be back at the Blue Jays arms. Are you back at the Blue Jays? I think I might have to back the Blue Jays today, but also take a look yeah, at an under. It's not because of the Toronto Blue wow. Jays. It's because of the Yankees. We're back in there. It feels Easy good, enough. though. They could get some of those old vibes back. Don't take the Yankees team total. Wait to the fifth inning tonight, people, when they don't have a oh. single run. Man, it goes well. It feels good just to say that again. Now, hold on a minute. I mean, so is it a Yanks team total under then? Is that really the way you're lining this up? Numbers are three and a half, DRS. Yeah, take them both. Take the under Yanks team total for the game, but take them over after the fifth inning. How about that? Does that make sense? <laughs> there you go. Man, nice nice the little needle. middle. They'll score Thread two the runs. Needle. There you go. More baseball previews coming on up. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full them. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for and them. And Diamond being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line. And we have to go to San Jose, too. Maybe a small player. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game line. Billy's here. Prime over minus time. 128. We do have to lay up a little bit of wood here, Donnie, but I think against Patrick Corbin. But, boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The morning after. Chargers a playoff team in 2022. I, I, our concern, our chief concern right now, no pun intended, is that the Chargers have had a habit of blowing games late. And it continued with the new coaching regime. I do think they are one of the teams that I can pencil in. I wouldn't put them in pen, but I'd pencil them in. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. The next uh, two Super Bowls for us are going to be ridiculous. Yeah. Like, just ridiculous. So I cannot wait to see what's going to happen in Arizona. Really hope it's not the Patriots. Oh, could you imagine no. that? No. Mac Jones in the Super Stop. Bowl in year two? Oh, Stop man. Stop talking. <laughs> The Bostonian versus the book. Pharrell, coast to coast. Is it that much better than the Phillies? Uh, I mean, I, I would say that probably as a staff, as a whole, the Braves staff is probably not as good as one and two of Philly. But I think from three on down, I do think Atlanta's better. And remember, some of those starting pitchers that are not going to start for the Braves are going to be coming out of the bullpen in a series like that in the wild card. So the Sports Grid Network. Hello, 
all be figured out in time. Let's break this baseball board down right here. Uh, Royals Rays is up next. We've got to zoom through these. We want to get you these baseball uh, edges uh, early. Donnie spends a lot of time meticulously crafting where these games are slotted to make sure it really hits you in an appropriate way. And McClanahan, mentioned it before, he's got the ball up against Singer. Six and a half for a total. Yuck. Ugh. Do not tell me you like the under, man. Find a different play. I'm moving on if you tell me you like under six and a half. You got quite inspired yesterday. And I'm talking about inspired by a producer by the name of JP. I said, you know what? Yesterday, Kevin, we're going to go with the Arizona Diamondbacks in that plus 126 number. Dominant performance. So I thought to myself today, how can I no up way. the ante today? He's going to take an under six no. and a half. Nah. Could it be that we're going to take the Kansas City Royals on the road against the guy that was supposed to win, the Cy Young? Let me play this out to you and sing a song for my game, my guy Singer here. 30 days, 3.5 XBIP, K percentage, which Kevin's going to love, 31%. Walk rate, 5%. Everything is lining up here for us. Let's take a look at those splits here for Singer. 57 batters he's faced from the left-hand side. A 144 weighted on base percentage and an ISO of a zero. So it's got to be getting lit up somewhere, right, Kevin? He's got to be falling through the cracks here. This can't be. Singer from Kansas City, no shot. 68 batters from the right-hand side. Weighted on base percentage, 294. ISO power number, 095. Give me that plus 180 today. Friday's Whoa. payday. Get paid on the road against McClanahan. Yeah. I'll tell Get you that. what, folks. That's a little surprising. What is interesting, mm. though, it's a hefty price to play on uh, to pay on that run line though. Minus 132 to grab a run and a half with the Royals. But the anticipation is such low scoring baseball. There mm -hmm. you could easily sell me on a world where that does make the difference. But hey, plus 176 is in play right now on Kansas City Singer versus McClanahan. McClanahan, this post-All-Star break has not been able to keep the groove going there. Uh, and really is no longer in this race right now. Uh, it, it might already be wrapped up and it's going Justin Verlander's way, but it doesn't seem like McClanahan is even option number two. Astros Braves. Oh, that's tangy. That's a good little series here. Land is a favorite. It's right against McCullers. I mean, these two teams, give me a reason to take an over. I don't need more than one. I don't know if I need any. I don't really care who's pitching, even though McCullers was awesome in his first game back. What are we doing here, Donnie, with Braves Astros? Yeah, truth be told, this game barely made the card today on a Friday for us. So I had to include yeah, it in I mean, here. I don't know who's going to be talking oh about goodness, Astros man. and Braves on a Friday night with so much other games going on here, like Brady Singer taking care of business down in Tampa. But if we have to get to this game, McCullers was great. Everything you anticipated, a young starting pitcher to be coming off the IL where you didn't know what you're going to get. Seems like some of these pedigree pitchers, like a Max Scherzer and Jacob DeGrom, have no problem coming back and dominating in their first performances. So next time around, what are we going to get out of Lance McCullers? Because if we take a look at just that one start, Kevin, only 21 batters he's faced. ISO power numbers of lefties, a zero. To righties at a 125. But we are talking about the Atlanta Braves lineup that can mix and match so many different players. And also, how long is that leash going to be on McCullers tonight? If he's dominant through five and six innings, are they already looking to the bullpen or let him extend a little bit more? Kyle Wright's going to be on the mound. 3.2 XFIP number, Kevin, over the past 30 days. Strikeout percentage over 20%. Now, he is a right-handed pitcher dominant against right-handed bats. But against lefties, he's been susceptible. 67 batters he's faced, Kevin, over the past month from the left-hand side. A 362 weighted on base percentage in an ISO of 274. But why is that important tonight? Only two left-handed batters, Alvarez and Tucker, do in the lineup tonight. So if we are looking at that total eight and a half, I know, I love, both of these lineups are very good. But in a playoff atmosphere type game, I find myself a lot of the times, Kevin, leading on that under eight and a half saying, once again, it takes mm -hmm. nine to beat me. Donnie, nine. They almost scored nine three times yesterday in their game. I understand that. But this is different circumstances. Two good pitchers on the mound. Two good bullpens out there to sort of hold it down. I think we go under the eight and a half today. All right. Not a bad look. I'll mention this quickly. McCullers is a really fascinating guy when you look at the strikeout prop there. Just almost doing your, your own self-capping. The projections say the five and a half makes a lot of sense with the heavy juice towards the over, right? But if you look, his first game back, six innings, 81 pitches, 5Ks against the Athletics. I know the Athletics are a significantly worse lineup than the Braves. The Braves strike out significantly more, though, than the Athletics do. Last night, DeGrom had nine, which was under a strikeout total, by the way. 
for where Jacob DeGrom was listed. That's how these numbers look when you're going up against the Atlanta Braves there. It's just interesting to see because five strikeouts in six innings like he had against the Athletics, that is underneath the normal expectation for McCullers when you talk about Ks per nine. Just an interesting number to watch as McCullers enters back into the fold and is probably a guy who starts, we might just break down during postseason action. Maybe they use him as a bullpen guy, but McCullers certainly has a pedigree there for them in Houston and could be someone they want to factor in a little bit more. Cardinals, Diamondbacks, you mentioned the D-backs helping people cash some plus money. If you back them tonight, it will be a plus price, better than plus 150 as Henry gets the ball against Michaelis for the St. Louis Cardinals. You like the snakes tonight? Something's got to give tonight. Now, here's the what we're looking at. Henry, the left-handed pitcher, is going to be on the mound for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Last 30 days, Kevin, an XFIP of over seven. Low strikeouts, high walks. But catch this here. He's faced 59 batters, Kevin, from the right side. A 280 weighted on base percentage and an ISO of 160. Right-handed batters, a zero ISO through 14. Excuse me, left-handed batters, a zero ISO through, it looks like, 14 at-bats and a 362 weighted on base percentage. So something has to give tonight, and it's probably going to be Henry on the mound. Because if we look at those St. Louis Cardinals over the past month against left-handed pitching, it's been absolutely tremendous. So maybe a team total in the forecast. Look at the first seven guys in the lineup, which it seems like every time I talk about St. Louis, it's the first seven guys all dominating between lefties and righties. Carlson, a 192 ISO. O'Neal, 304. Goldschmidt, 474. Arenado, 524. Pujols, 524. Edmund, 208. And DeYoung, 231. They should be able to get to Henry. That high exit means he's due to get damaged. And tonight... He should get damaged. All right. How about that? We'll take a look at what uh, Tommy Henry brings to the table. No strikeout prop on him right now in the FanDuel Sportsbook. Interested to see if that comes available. Michaelis checks in at a four and a half. Looking through as well, we've got the Nationals and the Padres battling once again. Blake Snell. Let me tell you something. Blake Snell saw the Nats in Washington. Strikeout prop was high. Seven and a half, maybe, up against this Nationals team that when you talk about fewer strikes out in baseball, our third now entering that game were second. It was one of those things I was surprised to see the projections say under. Considering the Washington Nationals felt like such a high number. Cruised. Absolutely cruised over the total. Because Blake Snell looks back. What do you think here with Blake Snell up against these Washington Nationals? Should be a dominating performance, just like we should have had a dominating performance yesterday from the Padres overall, but didn't get yeah, it. You Darvish true. waits to start pitches into the ninth inning. It didn't happen. But again, almost the same pitcher is on the mound today that was on the mound yesterday, like an Anibal Sanchez for the Nationals. That's Paolo Espino. 52 batters he's faced over the past month, Kevin, from the right side. 458 weighted on base percentage. 420 ISO power number. So you're looking at this in the same lens of yesterday. This should be a Padres 8-1 to one victory the way you line it up. But they do have to play the game. It's not played on paper. And we saw yesterday a close to four, minus 400 favorite going down in the ninth inning. I don't think that's going to be the case. I do think the Padres run away. And maybe coming back on a team total for the Padres today would make some sense. Snell, if you look, since we started July, has allowed one run or fewer in all of his starts but one. The ex- the exception there was the game at core. So if I could punt that down the road, this guy has just been awesome, awesome for this team, and they've needed it. Uh, quickly here, we can get to all the games we wanted to. The Dodgers are up against the Marlins. Mm-hmm. I'm not expecting a fish money line play here. What's the deal with the Dodgers in Miami? Yeah, seven and a half. This game should stay under. Lazardo's been great over the past month. A three X fifth number to right handed batters, which he's faced 59 of Kevin. A 174 weighted on base percentage and an ISO of 053. And then you just look at the Marlins lineup and say, it doesn't matter who's on the mound. They can't hit anyway. Take the under. Interesting. An early seven and a half moved up to an eight, but you like under going against where mm-hmm. this number is moving. So patience could pay off here. Get yourself a better number and play an under. In Dodgers Marlins. Up next, the NFL preseason continues. We're breaking those games down next. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 
Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's Game Time Decisions, only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The Bostonian versus the book. How relevant is season-long fantasy now? Like, do you hear people talking about season-long fantasy, or is it just because we're in Vegas, we're in the bubble, and we never hear about it? It's mentioned, but it used to be the thing. Right. It's not the thing anymore. And for you guys that are in fantasy and stuff, it's just the reality. Again, it's not personal. It's just, it's not as important as it was. I loved it. The Bostonian versus the book. Pharrell, coast to coast. Racking up numbers. We're going with the home run props for both the Jays and the Yankees tonight. So why not get them both to score a ton of runs, Scotty? Yankees and the Jays both to score four or more runs tonight at plus 210. Maybe the Yankee bats are awake after the Donaldson walk-off grand slam last night. I mean, I, I think so. Uh, Berrios, 5.6. Montas gives up three and a half, four runs a game. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Just to show you how thin tight end is, TJ Hawkinson with uh, these numbers. 583 is the seventh overall tight end being drafted. He's going to be with Dalton Schultz. Right, Dalton Schultz, Hawkinson, Goddard might put Zach Ertz in this tier as well. He was really good when he came over to Arizona last year. He's in that tier, uh, but still, he's a good, solid tight end. If you don't want to spend a second, third round pick on the guys I just mentioned, the top tier, the Sports Grid Network. And picks back up here. The early line has you covered. Let's mm. keep this uh, train rolling with the preview. All hour number two. I like that. That's good. That's what we're 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 pretty close. And that's just how these shows are going to be on our Fridays, man. Right into the action here. Pats Panthers. Now the New England Patriots are a home favorite here. Last time out, they were a home dog against the Giants. A little more respect here for New England. Suggests we'll see some of their offensive starters. However, that maybe isn't a good thing because every single report has been bad around their offense. And by the way, the number is moving quite a bit here this morning. Yes, it is. To four and a half, Donnie, on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Total is a 40 now. So a lot of early movement here. Does this mean we're going to see a lot of the New England starting lineup? I think you're going to see more than what you thought was coming into it because I was trying to, you know, read between the lines with Bill Belichick never tells you anything. And there's a chance that Mac Jones might play or might not play, which means you're not going to be betting on the New England Patriots to do a lot of damage if it's just all backups where they say we're going to be all vanilla. I believe in the first game there was something like 86% of the snaps for the Patriots all came out of the same formation. So they don't show you anything. So why would you bet on it? But it looks like maybe word is getting out that, you know what? We don't really have an offensive coordinator. Why don't you guys get used to calling real plays with real players in the game and see if we can work something out over, let's just say, the first half. That might be why that number is on the move from the three to the four and a half and now see how high it can actually get towards game time. That's what it means to me. We're expecting the Patriots to play and maybe even put a little bit of effort into a real game plan tonight. 
one of my favorite things people think is always necessary is to go, oh, I know I'm not supposed to react to preseason, but no, nah, forget that. We're reacting. This <laughs> genuinely feels like important if we watch the New England Patriots offense for a full quarter. Like, I need to see them into the end zone to quell the concerns that exist around this group. Let Mac Jones go out there. A couple of screen passes that go nowhere, three and out. Questions will have to be asked and answered. How much Baker Mayfield are you expecting tonight here? If they legitimately are going to name him the guy, I I think it could be reasonable. We go full quarter Baker, full quarter Darnold, and then the second half is split between Walker and Corral. How do you think Carolina plays it? You know, it's, it's, it's a great topic you bring up because, again, we're, we're just trying to think on what we think might happen, which is why it's the preseason. We don't know who's playing officially or how long they're actually going to play. But I have to tell you this. If Baker Mayfield, if you're getting word, that means somebody's leaking that inside the organization. I don't think anybody's making it up, even though we did think Baker Mayfield, as soon as he was traded, was going to be the starter for the Carolina Panthers. But once you're entrenched as the starter, the goal is to get you to the season healthy. Baker Mayfield doesn't need extended reps. He's been in the NFL. He started many games in the NFL before but you know what this might lean towards we need to get Sam Darnold ready so maybe Sam Darnold plays a in the end of the first quarter all the way through the second quarter maybe a snap or two or should I say a series or two into the third quarter uh, what are you going to get out of Matt Corral okay he's going to get his bumps out there you know Philip Walker as well I think this might lead more to a Sam Darnold game than a Baker Mayfield game if mm. the belief is true that he is the starting quarterback for the season talking about Baker Mayfield Interesting. I wonder how much juice we think this one has. But again, if you're going to make me get involved here, four and a half feels a little hefty. If it's the Ravens, who we'll talk about, by the way, okay, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe. But yesterday we saw it with the Bears. You grab three and a half points. It works in your favor here. If I'm playing this game, I think I'm taking four and a half points with the Carolina Panthers, and I'm keeping this train rolling. Packers, Saints. Makes the card next. Uh, Green Bay is a three-point home favorite. Total down now, 38.5 is a flat 38. Jordan Love season? I mean, are people excited about this? It's just, it's so interesting. Nobody cares about Jordan Love. It's just a total zero story. What do you make of this matchup here, Green Bay and New Orleans? Yeah, it's pretty funny. Like, if Jordan Love plays extremely well, nobody cares. If he's horrendous, nobody cares because it's Aaron Rodgers' football team for as long as he says it is and maybe have to trade off Jordan Love in the offseason or next year or whenever it might be. You're right about that. There's not a lot of juice, but I do think he gets a lot of playing time, and I think they call a legitimate game plan for him just to see what they have. But if we flip it over to the Saints out, out expect, excuse me, expecting tonight, Jameis Winston's not going to play. So it's the Andy Dalton show. What does he have to show? K.J. Costello, Ian Book, maybe one of your favorite quarterbacks of all time, University of Notre Dame. But if I see the mm -hmm. minus three, I think it makes sense here for the Green Bay Packers. Why? There's a little bit more to prove on their side. Number one with their backup quarterback, Jordan Love. But also, what did we hear all week long? Because I don't anticipate Aaron Rodgers playing. I don't think he plays at all in the preseason. But the mm -hmm. young wide receiving core is now under a microscope. So if you are an NFL franchise, a head coach saying, look, we're a little bit undermanned here. Let's sit all of our young guys until the regular season. That doesn't make sense to me. Legitimate play calls. See what you have in a young quarterback in love, but also you have to see what those wide receivers are. I doubt it's a game plan where they come out and say, let's just run the football, run the clock, and get out of here. You got to give your young wide receivers reps to get on the same page in this offense, and I think they do it tonight. So I think the Packers are a legitimate play here for me at a minus three. This is a spot where I actually do like the total towards the over. Jordan Love, as much as we can rag on the guy, is going to play at least an entire half of football here. Yeah. Which is good because last week he threw two touchdowns. Did he throw three picks? Fine. You just hope those picks come in the appropriate area. A 28-21 game against the Niners. And you mentioned Andy Dalton. And I know we can hand wave Dalton, but last week, five for five, 51 yards and a score. Preseason for Andy Dalton probably feels like everything is moving in slow motion. I mean, this guy has been a, been played way too many high-level reps, DRS. Like, Andy Dalton is not the kind of guy you think should be playing in the preseason. But considering this is week two of the preseason, as you said, no expectations. We'll see Jameis Winston. Can I get, can I get a full quarter out of Andy Dalton? I know a full half is probably asking too much. But if I get a yeah. full quarter out of Dalton, I'm trusting I'm going to get a touchdown. Out of that and I can get on my, my way towards that over 38. I'll mention this slightly. 
I don't think we're doing a quarterback battle between Jameis Winston and Andy Dalton. It's Jameis's job. But we've asked about a Daniel Jones, for example. And when do they go to Tyrod? And Andy Dalton is a legitimate backup quarterback. Does it ever enter your mind the idea that this Saints team could look Dalton's direction if we see early Jameis Winston struggles? It would have to be, Kevin, where his knee hasn't responded. That's the only way, because if you're trying to focus on the Saints for this season and beyond, it's the same way we talk about the, the Seahawks. Do you know Smith isn't your future? Who Drew Locke probably isn't either, but there's a better part that says, hey, Drew Locke can get it together and still have a long career in the NFL. Same way look at Jameis Winston. They're hoping he is legitimate enough to be a franchise guy because that'll save him a lot of time and energy in the offseason trying to make trades to find their starting quarterback. Andy Dolan's always going to be there, Kevin, as a decent backup, but I think the only scenario where Jameis Winston goes to the bench is if he's actually really injured. Which I wouldn't rule out either. By the way, it's just we know that this was a team that entered the Watson sweepstakes. They tried. And the way they have treated Jameis Winston, at least the way they did, they have not acted like they believe they have a franchise quarterback in the room, right? The Drew Brees injury, all of a sudden, Taysom Hill had the ball, not Jameis Winston. Last year, the version of Jameis that we saw did not look anything like the Bucks guy. Like, overly conservative relatively speaking there. I'm not saying it's a quick trigger, but Andy Dalton comes with a pedigree that, again, if the struggles are there early, I could see it becoming a conversation. The last Friday game, we'll get to the weekend slate uh, before we get out of here, so don't worry, plenty of time left with you here on the early line, is Rams-Texans. Houston is a road favorite. This is one of those things where you – Usually, I say, now hold on a minute. I mean, we're favoring the Texans on the road. But the Rams, Sean McVay I actively just doesn't value anything for his starters when we talk about the preseason. That is why I at least think we have the number here with Houston favored. Yes, and it should be Houston favored because you're right. You know the MOs, and I know we're going to bring up the Baltimore Ravens shortly. If there's a game and there's a scoreboard, the Ravens come to play preseason, postseason, regular season. It doesn't matter. Scrimmages in the offseason. But if you look at the Houston Texans here, you're looking at two organizations, one that just won a Super Bowl, one that has a veteran mindset, one that is only worried about making it to week one in the NFL against the Buffalo Bills and being healthy and not showing anything to the Buffalo Bills in the preseason that might help them scout them so you're going to take them completely out we love Sean McVay he's an unbelievable play caller he's not going to play anything or use any plays in this game that are going to be like, hey you know what we should have saved this one for week four that's a great look here the starters they're not going to play for the Rams and as you said they don't care about that but for an organization like the Houston Texans just trying to get reps and build on something this game means a lot more to them not to say they're putting all their eggs in a basket. And boy, boy, if we can go back on the plane ride home, like we just beat the world champion, Los Angeles Rams. We're going to have a great season. Obviously, that's not the case. But Houston taking this game a little bit more seriously than the Rams, I think, makes the difference there. And I would take the Houston Texans on the road against the Rams. So I said, I understand how we get to the number, but I, I don't know if I agree with you or the number. The Rams won last week. You know, you're allowed to still win the game here. Mm-hmm. And again, Don, am I supposed to believe uh, Big Edge, the Houston Texans starters are out there? You think you're going to be really able to tell the difference between the Houston Texans starters and the Rams number twos? I'm not so sure about that. I mean, we'll see if, how long they're going to play Davis Mills. I'm not so sure it's going to be incredibly lengthy there. Last week for the Rams, Bryce Perkins played the entire game at quarterback. He was the only one that threw a pass. But he did have two passing touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. And you've often been enamored with the idea of a running quarterback in the preseason where Mm -hmm. "Ah, nobody's trying to tackle you, man. Just go down here. What are we doing? It's a preseason game. Interesting stuff, but I'll take a home dog here against the Houston Mm. Texans if I can with the Los Angeles Rams. We're going to the weekend slate of the NFL preseason next.
Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's Game Time Decisions, only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The Bostonian versus the book. How relevant is season-long fantasy now? Like, do you hear people talking about season-long fantasy, or is it just because we're in Vegas, we're in the bubble, and then we never hear about it? It's mentioned, but it used to be the thing. Right. It's not the thing anymore. And for you guys that are in fantasy and stuff, it's just the reality. Again, it's not personal. It's just, it's not as important as it was. I loved it. The Bostonian versus the book. Pharrell, coast to coast. Racking up numbers. We're going with the home run props for both the Jays and the Yankees tonight. So why not get them both to score a ton of runs, Scotty? Yankees and the Jays both to score four or more runs tonight at plus 210. Maybe the Yankee bats are awake after the Donaldson walk-off grand slam last night. Uh, I mean, I, I think so. Uh, Barrios, 5.6. Montas gives up three and a half, four runs a game. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Just to show you how thin tight end is, TJ Hawkinson with uh, these numbers. 583 is the seventh overall tight end being drafted. He's going to be with Dalton Schultz. Right, Dalton Schultz, Hawkinson, Goddard might put Zach Ertz in this tier as well. He was really good when he came over to Arizona last year. He's in that tier, uh, but still, he's a good, solid tight end. If you don't want to spend a second, third round pick on the guys I just mentioned, the top tier, the Sports Grid Network. Season preview continues on Sports Break. Taking a look now at some of the games that will be taking place this weekend. And I'm sure Jag Steelers will legitimately have the attention of many people. One of the reports we've heard is that Kenny Pickett is going to take, quote, varsity reps mm. this week. So we've got the Jags as a three-point favorite. The total is 41 and a half. How many varsity reps are you expecting for Kenny Pickett and what in the world are varsity reps? Yeah, it's, I, I like this too because you know we, we like to read in between of what actually is being said here. Seems like Mike Tomlin is using this jargon as look, kid's not ready here. Varsity reps, high school, you get it right. Not pro reps. He's really mm -hmm. stepped up. Even though we saw him play well in preseason game one, he's handled everything he's needed to at a camp. We haven't once gotten boy Kenny Pickett is really overwhelmed here in camp. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to compete for a starting job. So you try to increase and put more and more on Kenny Pickett's plate, which I think they'll do in this preseason game. But if we're looking overall at the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think we get some pretty good quarterback play because Mitchell Trubisky is still trying to solidify his starting job. Kenny Pickett trying to move up the charts here. And Mason Rudolph trying to say, hey, look, I'm still an NFL quarterback. I want to stay on this football team. So they have a pretty three, pretty good three-pronged attack here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. If we're looking at the total also, Kevin, it looks like betters are believing in a clean offensive game as well. FanDuel Sportsbook opened this game up at 38 and a half. And now, as you see, we're up over 41 and a half. 
So I do believe that we get scoring in this game. And from a Jaguars perspective, I expect a little bit more out of Trevor Lawrence. Maybe some more starters play tonight. This game should have the feel of a competent preseason football game. I'm feeling the over in this Mm. one. I think I am. Interesting. So I, I think for me, just quickly on the Kenny Pickett deal, if you're going to be giving, again, varsity action is the phrase, that would suggest he's going to play with the ones, right? Yes. How are you going to accomplish that? Are you going to start him over Trubisky in the game? Absolutely not. Are you going to start him over Mason Rudolph? Possibly, which yeah, would maybe. be a legitimate move to suggest that Pickett would be number two on the depth chart. But let's say they're also not going to do that, which I wouldn't put past Mike Tomlin, by the way. Are you going to run through all three of these guys in the first half? Are you going to put Kenny Pickett out there with the ones going to the half, and then he comes back out and plays with the twos slash threes DRS? Like, do you see what I'm trying to get at here? Because... What I don't think, because because you're saying over, and I understand why you're saying over, and I'm not sure I'm necessarily going against it, but if we if you burn Trubisky, Rudolph, and pick it all in the first half, you run into a bit of a problem. So I'm trying to figure out how they intend on accomplishing varsity action for Kenny Pickett. This what you might want to take out of this is that it might be Mitchell Trubisky is a lot closer to being the starting quarterback or maybe already entrenched as a starting quarterback in week one. Because when you hear this, they're trying to still get a gauge on what Kenny Pickett can handle and pick up on. So the next step in his maturation process is getting him to play with the ones as opposed to playing in the fourth quarter with third and fourth stringers who might not be on the football team. So here's how I actually read this. I do think Mitchell Trubisky is going to play, but let's just say he only gets like two drives. Then Kenny Pickett's going to come in with the starters. We might be getting extended time for Mason Rudolph. Like, I'm talking maybe an entire second half or late into the second quarter and into the third quarter. So I think we're going to get a short look at Trubisky, an extended look at Pickett, and maybe the guy who's going to play the most tonight, Mason Rudolph to me. Interesting. That... And it's one of those spots where, look, I know that people, if they're going to get their preseason action, are they really kind of waiting for a massive edge over live lines? I hear you. But this might be one of those games. And if you're just, you know, around Saturday looking to get some action in, a live approach could work here to see what the Steelers are really trying to do at the quarterback spot. Because if you're going to get the entire second half of Mason Rudolph, that's really good. That you could you yeah. could potentially argue that a second half of Mason Rudolph is better than a second half of a Kenny Pickett because maybe they just let Rudolph absolutely rip it against backup guys. These are kind of the things that you want to see here, but it really sets the stage for an interesting week number two for the Pittsburgh Steelers and the potential idea that Kenny Pickett could swipe in and take this job. Titans Bucks has two stories here for me: the rookie quarterback story, Malik Willis. Now, Malik Willis, is he going to steal Ryan Tannehill's job before the season starts? Absolutely not. It's more about what kind of buzz a Malik Willis can create on a weekly basis. We'll see how that plays out. But the other story here is, does the Tom Brady stuff impact Tampa Bay at all? At all? Does it matter Is anybody trying to prove a point while Tom is out? You and I have joked about Kyle Trask saying, this is my moment to tell them to tell Tom to stay home, and this is my team. That's not serious. But do do you factor the Brady news in one iota to this football game? Now, it's with the Brady news, right? I don't really, I don't follow Tom Brady on social media. I don't have an Instagram account. I don't follow Facebook, but I am on Twitter, but I don't follow him, as I said. If there was no real news to this, I would say no. It, it makes no bearing. They're just going to go as business as planned. But you know there are disaster scenarios that every organization runs through. And if they say, wow, Tom Brady isn't coming back, do you know what that means? We better find this starter. And those football players, like a Blaine Gabbert, Ryan Griffin, and Kyle Trask, all of a sudden their ears perk up. Wow, I could be a starter in week one. Hey, coach, you got to have to see what I have. You know what you have to do? Don't make me hand off six plays in a row, punt twice, and get off the football field. That's not what's going to happen here. you got to call plays where I can see if I can execute, and I could be that starter week one. So even though the Tom Brady news where the smoke where there's fire, we don't know if he's coming back, which he probably will be coming back, 
but you have mm-hmm. to go into z- disaster scenario mode and find your guy an appropriately game plan so you can grade these guys out. Because heading into the preseason, I'm pretty sure the Buccaneers didn't have any backup plan if Tom Brady was leaving. Ah, Gabbard will get his, Griffin, Trask. Let's just see who's going to be the two, who's going to be the three, who's going to get cut and end up on the practice squad. That's not the case now. They might be searching for their week one starting quarterback. Therefore, they got to give an honest game plan out there this week, Kevin. Now they're not actually searching for their week one starting quarterback, though. They all they we all know Put that, that it's out going there. to be Tom Brady. Put that but, out there. Uh, I mean, it, it's one of those things where you can spin the wheels until uh, he's back and and everything is fine. I'll say this: I'm a little cautious on this total. And somebody that had an over with the Ravens Titans game, which did get there by the way, but it was really uh, quite narrowly. Now maybe that's Baltimore mm-hmm. being Baltimore and their ability to throw a second half shutout, but. When Malik Willis was gone, the Logan Woodside reps were just horrendous there. Oh, come on. So we upped this thing to a 38 and a half. I don't know how much Tannehill we're supposed to get, if any at all. So a little hesitation on that Saturday total. Uh, Browns, Eagles, it's an interesting one. The quarterback plan. Not really from the Philly side of it all. Who, by the way, the Philadelphia Eagles check into this game as a road favorite, mind you, which is a little surprising. It'll, they, they're, they're, look, their starters looked awesome last week against the Jets. But then the bench got in, and they ultimately did lose that game here. What do you make of the line and, and the quarterback plan for Browns-Eagles? Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe if the Eagles are going to play a little bit more players in this game than the Browns, it doesn't really make all that much sense. We do know that the Sean Watson is not going to play in this game or play the rest of the preseason. So I know how important it was for that opening series to get him in in Jacksonville so the fans could chant at him. He didn't play all that well. And then they said, okay, we've seen enough. He's our future franchise MVP quarterback. We'll see him in the month of December, which is kind of interesting. But overall for the Eagles, is it just a balance of, well, Jalen Hurts will get probably the first quarter tonight and then Gardner Minshew the second and third quarter to keep him sharp. So your quarterback room is essentially better than, I guess, the Cleveland Browns room. And also now that you've moved on for Deshaun Watson, are there two trains of thought here for the Cleveland Browns? We got to get Jacoby Brissett extra reps in this game because now we know how long he's going to be our quarterback in 2022. But I look at it the same way. If your starting quarterback is going to be Jacoby Brissett, he's not going to play a full half of football tonight. You're going to get him in, get him in the rhythm, hopefully a scoring drive, and get him out. So maybe you're just betting this game on Gardner Minshew playing extended periods of time, who has been a quarterback with some success in the NFL. But the minus three for the Eagles, it doesn't stick out from like, yeah, the Eagles should be able to run away with this preseason game. Here's the interesting note that I don't know if people realize from Browns Jags. There were no Jacoby Brissett reps for Cleveland. Because I'm wondering if the Browns... Because, Don, there are teams that don't play their starters. I know know if they played Watson. I still don't know really why they threw Watson out. By the way, (laughs) they're allowed to play Watson tonight or today, next week, whenever the game is, throughout the rest of the preseason, all right? But they're not going to. Are they going to play Brissett or are they like, no, 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 no. This is the Josh Dobbs, Josh Rosen show, which maybe that is why we're looking at the Eagles as a road favorite. Maybe you try and get involved with the first half, though. Maybe see if that can make things a little bit better there. Uh, Let's get to the streak. We'll cover anything up we've missed, but uh, the Baltimore Ravens looking to make it 22 preseason wins in a row. They've covered 18 of those preseason games that they have won They're laying five and a half points on the road. Man, this is one of those games where everything kind of pulls you in a separate direction, right? (laughs) Because you're you're taught, you know, you don't just go against the trend to go against the trend. How many people, Donnie, have lost just going against Baltimore during this whole thing just because it can't continue? But similarly, how are we justifying laying almost a touchdown on the road in the preseason. Everybody's going to do it. That's how you can justify it. Are you asking me right now? You see that number. And even though it's five and a half, which means the Ravens, let's just say we have to win by a touchdown or more. They don't lose preseason games. And if you don't lose preseason games, it's a pretty good chance that you winning many of these games by six points or more enough to cash that ticket in. I'm not going to be the guy, Kevin, that sits here, watches this game, turns it on and says, you know what? Tonight, tonight, the Ravens lose. Hey, Donnie, what's the score of that Ravens game in the third quarter? 
17 3 <laughs> Ravens. Ah, just what you thought. Sharpest guy in the room right there. It's one of those where you can even even if the numbers, if you're handicapping this game based on quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, or whatever metrics you're using for the preseason, it doesn't matter. Like one team you know wants to win. Now, when is it going to be, Kevin, where we flip the script over to the other teams going, you know, we interview them. Hey, you're playing the Ravens in the preseason. Yeah, you know what? It's important we stop this streak. It's ridiculous, 20 plus. We want to <laughs> we want to hang a trophy on our wall that we beat the Ravens in the preseason when nobody else could do that. Maybe teams like, I don't know, the Houston Texans would take pride in that or the upstart teams. But if I'm looking at this game overall, I'm not betting against. I'm not betting against the Ravens. No way. Like the Cardinals played, I know everything's different. I'm just saying. They played Cincinnati week one of the preseason. They were up 36 to nine at one point in that game. Like if if it was reversed, like, ah, yeah, the Cardinals preseason stuff looks bad. Was there, is there more word that Kyler Murray is going to call all the plays in this game or something like that? And that's why things are going to look so bad for the Cardinals here. I per, I don't think I could get involved with the side. I, I really don't think I have that in me. The total, though, 38 and a half. I think you could definitely sell me on I just maybe I'm buying too much into what Arizona did last week and not enough to the Baltimore defense in a preseason game. But nevertheless, uh, there's a lot of preseason action. The Giants are going to host Cincinnati as a six point favorite, which is big time. Mm. Chargers have the Cowboys. The Vikings yep. are hosting the Niners quickly. Any of these other games you are interested in? Yeah, actually, it's the one you just mentioned there, Dallas and the Chargers uh, go, getting underway. 35 and a half now up to a 37 and a half for the FanDuel Sportsbook. But also, Dallas right. opened up as a minus one and a half point favorite, has now swung to a three point favorite for the Chargers. I need Dallas to not have penalties and actually move the football in this game. That's what I'm watching. Saturday, Chiefs commanders total 44. There will be a bunch of NFL games that are underneath that pre that total for a preseason game pretty interesting all right listen up donnie closes the week out here on sports grid Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to ABG, coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game oh, live man. prime oh, time. The the PGA champion. In yeah. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. And I'm going to say this until I'm blue in the face. Let me help you, NCAA. Put me in control. We will wipe the bowl season out completely. We will put in a 30-team playoff at a minimum. We will wipe out the cupcake schedules, and everybody will eat at the end of the year. More money in your pockets, college football guys. More fun in my pocket here. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. They went out and they signed DJ Shark, formerly of the Jacksonville Jaguars, to a uh, contract. And Shark was an afterthought in Jacksonville. And maybe it's predominantly because of the offense that they were running last year under Urban Meyer. But Shark basically was in and out of injuries. He had some hand issues. And he only caught 154 receiving yards and two touchdowns. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Hara with your Daily Numbers game and the ongoing saga of Soldier Field and the Chicago Bears. Well, way back when, when I was involved with the NFL on the stadium side, we all decided that a non-dome renovation of Soldier Field at the exact same place with historical tax credits would be the way to go. Some said move it closer to the McCormick place, put a dome on it, Final Fours, NCAAs, Super Bowls. Well, that didn't happen. Now, Bears buy property, Arlington Heights, 
wanting to do a joint venture there well in time for their lease to expire. The city says, uh-uh, not so fast, and the controversy ensues. The side controversy, the turf. Elton John plays a concert there eight days later, the Chiefs and the Bears. Now the fire move their game. The Players Association says, this is unacceptable for us to play. It looks like playing on dirt. It's just one of those little skirmishes and battles until a team gets a long-term stadium deal. Look for more of it. All right, last segment of the week right here on the Early Line, Series XM Channel 159, right here on the Sports Grid Network. Down your right side, Kevin Walsh, as always, 7 to 9 a.m., setting the table before we hand it over to Ben Stevens and the morning after and the rest of your Sports Grid programming throughout the day. The NFL ready in a big way. It's dress rehearsal week, people. Listen up. Sure, yesterday we saw the shenanigans from the NFL, the suspension of the Sean Watson, 11 games, $5 million. You saw the press conferences from the Cleveland Browns, including the Sean Watson and the front office and ownership, and nobody was happy with that. But alas, the NFL moves on. We have to get over this. Football is going to be played. It's not going to stop, and including this week. Week two of the NFL preseason, which is the new week three of the NFL preseason. Why is that? Because there's no longer four games in the preseason. There's only three. So this is usually the game that everybody gets their pads on and ready to play, except for the elite talent in the NFL. And oh, yeah, also Tom Brady, who's on an extended vacation. But the interesting part here is don't get overhyped. Don't get underwhelmed. Don't lose sleep over your football team not playing all that well. Because in reality, it doesn't matter. The goal for the NFL teams here, get your work done in practice, play these preseason games, and hopefully you're not injured. So by the time you do take the reins in week one, everybody is ready to go. But I got to tell you, pretty exciting slate of games that we just talked about, both myself and Kevin, breaking it down. The Pittsburgh Steelers, quarterback job up for grabs. Carolina also with the New England Patriots squaring up. What are we going to get out of their multiple sets of offensive coordinators who were former defensive coordinators and failed head coaches along with some special teamers? We'll see what takes place there. The Philadelphia Eagles on the road in Cleveland, and we won't see Deshaun Watson. Will we see Jacoby Brissett take the helm tonight and see, excuse me, on Sunday and see if he can move the football forward here for the Browns? A lot to go over, but again, don't get too high and don't get too low over the preseason, even if it is a dress rehearsal. That'll do it for the show today and the week on the early line. Shout out to our boy Griff behind the scenes, handling his business over the summer before heading back to Hofstra. Stay tuned for Ben. He's up next.